Hi, I'm Ross Shipton from Midi, and today I'm going to give you some tips for fishing in early spring, including one I believe you would have never heard of before. Early spring just coming out of winter, and the weather's warming up a bit, which means the water is too. And hopefully that means the fish are starting to move about a bit and become more active and begin to feed. This doesn't mean it's easy and we still have to be careful. Here's some of the things I've used to catch more fish at this time of year. Today we're at Ultra Place Farm in Paddock Wood, Kent, and we're on Lake Six, one of their match lakes. I come here quite often and it's excellent fishing and I really look forward to going into springtime here when they're waking up and some big bags of fish to be had. One tip I use in the spring is fishing the bomber maggot. I fish that over my 14, 16 meter line later in the match. And for that, I use this mini reactor core mini carp feeder rod, because it's a nice light rod, nice light action. I just use it in the 10 foot six version. I use the lightest bomb I can get away with. This is only seven grams. And I use the lightest hook length, usually about 18 inches but I try to use floating maggots. With a light gauge hook, I use the 6313 in a 20. Very strong, but very light gauge. And the floating maggots helps it sink more slowly in an angle like this, and therefore, hopefully, induces that bite from those crafty fish at this time of year. To prepare my maggots to make them float, it's very simple. All I do, is have a small bait tub, just put a small amount of water in the bottom and you drop some clean maggots, just clean them off, riddle them off. You drop them in and then you just put it on your bait, your side tray at this sort of angle. So the bottom is covered in water and those maggots will just wriggle up out of the water. I leave it on the front of my tray so it's up at an angle and I just pick them off when they're crawled out of the water and they will float and give you that extra slow fall. One good way of stimulating bites this time of year is introducing ground bait. This is the ground bait I use. It's uh, for adrenaline and I use quite often at this time of year a mix 50-50 of the betaine green and the F1 noir. When the water's clear, which still is in the springtime, I add F1 noir to match the colour of the bottom to get it a bit darker. This is the result of the right quality for today's clarity of water. But my tip for mixing the ground bait is mix it the night before at home with hot water. Once it cools down the next day, over you put it in the fridge overnight, you bring it to your peg, you riddle it off, and it, for some reason, doing it that way, once you've riddled it, it becomes so fluffy, it's much better, much better. And this works for all types of ground baits. When you get the ground bait as fluffy as this, it, it gives you a wide range of ways you can introduce it to the water for what you want it to do. So for example, if you're fishing over silt or in shallower water, you can have it add a little bit more water to the mix and introduce it loose, just like this. And that gives a, a a spread and it won't sink into the seal so that they won't grub around in the seal. You can also squeeze it differently, different amounts, so it will last longer on the bottom. Squeeze it really hard, it can stay hard for quite a while. Or just soft, a little bit wetter, and it explodes as it is the bottom to give you that cloud. Just experiment with what you want it to do. The main thing is mixing it the night before with that hot water making it fluffy, that hot water will make it inert for the next day. You don't want it too fizzy, too active at this time of year because you won't have that big trail through the column of water because they're not following it everywhere at the moment. They're just mooching around. Stability and keeping your bait still, especially when pellet fishing is still a big thing in, in the springtime. And here's one tip that I'm sure none of you would have heard of before. 
This is what I do to counteract the tow. I use a diamond shaped float from the MW range with a glass stem, but on the bottom of it, I have some lead core. And the lead core takes up, say, two thirds of the weight of the float. And what this does, when the float is in the water, and here's the back shot, and you're holding that back, it stabilizes it by pushing a little bit more weight further down. And when you're trying to hold in the wind, it stops the float doing this because you've got more weight lower down. And it counteracts that tow very well. Still further down, you have your light bulk, strung out bulk, whatever way you want to fish it. But because of that piece of leg core, that will hold that in position and keep your float dead still. And I think this little tip gives me great presentation when I'm fishing and I'm sure it's caught me more fish over the years. Feeder fishing still plays a big part in uh, springtime fishing and there's an array of different types of feeders for whatever you want to do. My favourite is the pellet feeder for this time of year. Smaller quantities of bait introduced and a tight, tight ball, a little spread of bait just at one end. They can only attack it from one end. The pellet feeder works especially well in deeper water for getting the bait down and you know it's still in your feeder when it hits that bottom because you can compact into the basin. It's surrounded in three sides. But my tip for the bait to use on this are these snack attacks. They come in different flavors and they ooze attractant. And that to me gets you that extra bite. If I open this one up, They're soft, but they have a hard center, which you can put on a bait spike. But they also, when you squeeze them, they have lots of attractant in there. And in spring, when the fish are still wary, I believe these, with their attractants, get me those extra bites. <laughs>